Now to an incredible story and an incredible medical achievement because conjoined twins whose brains were fused together have been successfully separated. That over my shoulder is the first picture of the boys, Bernardo and Alturo, lying next to each other after the marathon surgery. They had seven operations in total, the final two surgeries alone lasting 33 hours. Well, the surgery was done in Brazil, but uh, overseen by Dr. Oas Gilani, a UK-based paediatric surgeon who pioneered this type of surgery. And he told me emotionally what it was like pulling this off. It's a near impossible task um, that requires a lot of preparation, a lot of thinking, a lot of planning. And when the final execution happens and you end up with two live kids that are making a good recovery is a great experience. It's, Before it's, we move on, and we'll touch on so many different areas of this, uh, I know it's very early, but, but how are the boys? It's early stages yet. We did the final separation seven weeks ago, but at this stage they're making an excellent recovery. Uh, they're showing progress every single day, but uh, what we'd like to do is wait for a six-month period after the surgery before you can prognosticate more accurately about the future. It was incredibly complicated, wasn't it? I mean, I mean, there are many surgeons who, who actually thought it was impossible, weren't there? Uh, certainly. I mean, if you look at the history of this type of surgery, uh, perhaps 20 years ago it was felt that most of these surgeries were not possible. What we've shown now with our experience is that it is possible to undertake this surgery for a lot of the children, not all. There's certainly sets of twins that were, were referred and we declined to operate on them. But these kids, we felt, were separable with an acceptable level of th uh, risk. The next step, which is perhaps the most important step, is communication with the family. They need to understand in explicit detail what the risks are, what it entails, so they can then make an informed decision about whether to proceed or not. And all of that was done by the team in Rio. It was an ex excellent team, exceptionally talented team. Dr. Gabriel, my counterpart in Rio, had been looking after those boys for two years with his team, and they'd done a great job. But fundamentally, if you haven't had the experience of dealing with something like this, it is extremely difficult to just suddenly do something that you have no experience of. That's where we come in, Gemini Untwined. And your colleague was saying how much he feels part of the family, having been with the family, with the boys for, for such a long time in the build-up to all of this. But uh, I want to put on to the screen a picture of the boys, uh, with you actually, uh, before the surgeries began, because they're nearly four. And uh, tell me, I mean, how tough has their life been? Uh, incredibly. I think, you know, the picture speaks a thousand words. These were otherwise healthy, uh, nearly four-year-old boys that could not sit, that could not walk, could do very little of what other four-year-olds do. So you can imagine how difficult life would have been for them and certainly their parents and the family around them. And you contrast that with the picture that is uh, in between us of the two of them separated. It is just extraordinary. Now, just take me through the planning, because I know there was a huge amount of planning using virtual reality, using models. Just, just tell me more about how you, how you thought it through and prepared for all of this. Sure. So it, it's quite a complex task, but with any complex task, what we do is break it down into smaller, more manageable steps. So how do you deal with the brain? How do you deal with the blood vessels, the skin, the bone, the covering of the brain? And when you think about it in that format, you can then make strategies and plans for every single step. The task then is, OK, we've got all the various pieces. We know what to do at various stages. How do you put it all together? And that requires practice simulations, which is what we did over a six month period. And just briefly, because uh, we're seeing, you know, models of the brain and the blood vessels. It, it, when you were practicing and uh, did the team get it wrong on occasions? Uh, in the practice a number of times and that's the whole idea of the practice and why we need to do it so you run a simulation if you end up in a dead end you say okay this was the wrong strategy at this point we'll come back perhaps let's tackle this part from this angle first and that's the whole idea of running these simulations but what we were able to do this time around which is a world first is to do it in virtual reality across the two continents with us setting it up on our platforms here we wore the VR goggles and then invited the team in Brazil to join the VR theater. And all of the surgery was done in virtual reality. All the steps were taken before we actually lifted the scalpel.